Today I'm going to tell you why I no longer go to gun shows and why I think they suck. Now some of y'all are going to maybe agree with some of the points I make here. Some of you may disagree with all of the points that I make here. I, wherever you fall in line with what I'm about to say, I'd love to hear your opinion after the video. Just let me speak my piece on this topic. And again, this is a conversation starter for all of us. Maybe, maybe to potentially make gun shows a better experience in the future. I have no idea where this video will fall, but at the same time, I just want to give you my personal opinion on gun shows, why I think they suck. And some of y'all might be surprised at some of the reasons that I think they suck. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first reason that I'm going to tell you I hate gun shows now, you can't conceal carry or even open carry inside of a gun show. Hear me out. This is like the ultimate oxymoron. Now, I tried to think of this from the perspective, okay, you have a lot of people, if all of which were carrying guns, maybe they think that, oh, well, all these people with all these access to guns are, are, are going to cause trouble and there's, it's going to be like the wild, wild west. Uh, wh really? This blew my mind the very first gun show I ever went to, and I'll never forget it. I get there, though. And I see the biggest no guns allowed sign I have ever seen in my life up to that point and since then still the biggest one I've ever seen. And I was like, this is kind of unbelievable, you know? So yeah, there's a lot of, you know, there's always police officers and stuff there and your state may be totally different. You may be allowed to open or conceal carry inside of yours. I have no idea, but I can just tell you where I live in South Carolina, the gun shows I've been to, you're not allowed to conceal carry. Does that mean that everybody follows that? Nope, and that ain't none of my business. But what I am saying, it seems really counterintuitive to have all these people that are trusted with firearms all around them but can't carry their own. I just, I, I think it's so dumb. If you're new to the channel, I'd like to welcome you and thank you for checking out today's video and would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you like what you see here and also drop a like on the video, destroy that like button and make sure that you follow me right here on YouTube where I am bringing weekly content including concealed carry tips for beginners and for people that have been carrying for a very long time the latest and greatest concealed carry reviews, but I also go a step further and I will take multiple concealed carry guns, review them against each other, tell you the pros and cons. I also do this with pistols. I also do rifle reviews. I do a lot of stuff here. So if you like to check out my other content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out some of the playlists I have right here. Let's go ahead and get right into this. Now imagine this. Let's say you're somebody that lives in a more rural or remote area, or let's just say the area you live in, does you don't have a gun shop where you have access to a lot of different guns. Let's say you're looking at a P320, a Smith & Wesson M2.0, a Glock 19. Okay, you want an idea of how the triggers, the, the dry firing is on each one of these guns. Well, the gun show is your one opportunity where you have all these guns together and you finally get to dry fire it just to pull up to the table and realize there's a cable lock through the slide, around the trigger, through the back strap, locked to the case, underneath the table, and you can't pull the trigger on this gun to compare all three to each other. This is aggravating. Now again, I, can al I always try to see things from both sides. You have a dealer that has paid money to be at that place and they don't want their inventory stolen from them, right? The markup on firearms isn't a ton anyways for dealers, right? So I, I understand that part of it. You don't want your guns being stolen, but at the same time, they need to be readily available to be taken off at, at a moment's notice. If, if, if the person asking you is being respectful and all that, so you can actually pull them off and dry fire them and do all that kind of stuff. So I don't think it's so stupid that they, that they have these cables wrapped through the guns and all that kind of stuff, but I do think that you should be able to ask like, hey man, can I compare these three guns and dry fire them? Here's my license, here's my keys, whatever. I'm not gonna run off with your gun. Obviously I ain't gonna get that far without my keys, my license and all that. 
just let me just let me do that. And so that leads me into the next point. And you can you can absolutely ask them and most of the time they will oblige. But let me tell you, some of the most smug I'm serious, man. When I first started getting into this, dude, I I I questioned what I had always been told that gun enthusiasts are the nicest people on the planet and since then, obviously, I've 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 grown this community. We've grown this community together. I've met a lot of y'all. Super awesome people, dude. The best people on the planet. But there are some really, really terrible, smug ass that are into firearms. And you're bound to meet one or two at a gun show. It can be really uninviting, especially if you don't know anything about this because you're gonna get a lot of people and you're gonna hear a lot of things and all of which you're going to be taken in like, wow, all these people know all this stuff about firearms just to find out that a lot of it is just talk, man. It, 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 like I said, it's like this anywhere you go. You can go to a car meet, you can go to a gun show, you can go to any get together and, and see one or two or a few really smug people. But in this world, it's a little bit different because you're dealing with people and, and trying to provide them with something to protect their families, to protect their, themselves, to have them join and be accepted into uh, this, this beautiful thing that we have. And so to be smug and, you know, just really uninviting to especially new people in this, I, just, I hate that vibe, dude. And I always get that vibe from at least one or two people when I go to a gun show. Uh, that's a, another reason why I don't even bother. Now, don't confuse this with local gun shops. This is where I've met the majority of some of y'all, and I've met, been able to interact with people that are into guns and really want to bring you in. So when you find a good local gun shop, stick with that gun shop, man. Frequent there often, and I promise you, you will make friends. There's just something about that gun show experience that just turns some of them into the worst of the worst and maybe it's they, they are who they are anyways and because you get all these different personalities that's probably what it is dude just don't get the wrong impression and think man just because you ran into one or two of them at a gun show that that represents a lot of us because the majority of us are willing to answer questions and help you along in your journey and willing and wanting to invite you in because the more of us there are the less people that are out there that are against us, that's a good thing. Next thing we're gonna talk about, the deals suck. You know, I can't tell you the last time I went to a gun show and found a screaming deal. Anything from an ammo to a gun, military surplus deals. Uh, I mean, it's really, really bad, dude. I mean, I don't see the benefit of going to a gun show, dealing with all these people, trying to haggle <laughs> just so you can go online, have it shipped to your gun store and do your background check that way. And it might be 10, 20, 30% cheaper doing it online. Now I'm all about supporting small businesses, which is again, why I found a local gun shop. That's the one I go to. I buy what I can from them to support them. But I haven't found a good deal at a gun show I, I don't know. Maybe I don't go enough. Maybe I go to the wrong ones, but I just, I see the prices are higher. You know, they paid to have that table again. So they got to recoup money already. It's just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's worth it. If you want to go there for deals, not saying you won't ever find them, but I wouldn't expect to get some kind of screaming deal when you go to a gun show. And this kind of leads me into the next one. It's the Amazon effect, man. And Amazon doesn't sell guns, but you know what I'm saying? You can order any and everything you want online and with guns, obviously they can't be shipped to your house. You have to do your background check. So you send it to an FFL. There's a transfer fee involved. Typically it's minimal. You do your background check, you pass it, you go home. Boom, that's it. And it's worth it most of the time because again, you can find such a great deal. Why would I try to fight with somebody else just when I can go online and do it. I'm pretty much saying the same thing I just said, but that Amazon effect, it obviously it affects guns and gun sales as well. 
and it's just more convenient to do it in your home. If I want or need something right now, I'll go to that same gun shop I was just talking about without the crowd, be able to probably get close or even under what the gun show was selling it for and have a much better experience. I support local businesses as much as I can, especially locally owned gun businesses and gun shops, but I would much rather go there than go to a gun show. And the last thing we'll talk about is all of the non-related gun things at a gun show. So you'll have purses, and some of which will be concealed carry purses. You'll have throwing stars, you'll have knives, you'll have backpacks, you'll have a variety of non-related gun items that most of which I don't have any real interest in when I go to a gun show. So I do want to highlight some of the positives of gun shows too, because this, there is some real cool, like World War II stuff. I mean, you will almost always see World War II firearms, memorabilia, collectibles, whatever. You want to be very wary with this stuff. And a lot of our, our private sellers, honestly, that bought those tables. So you want to know what you're looking at, man. And there's so many variations in World War II stuff. Just be careful. But if you want to see some of these items, up close and personal, including the guns and ammo and stuff from back then. Dude, th there's, there's very few places where you're gonna see a wide collection of this, unless you have like an historical gun, uh, you know, type of gun show where it's all just World War II, Civil War, World War I type of firearms and stuff. So, but even at regular gun shows, you're gonna see some of this stuff. It's very cool. I'm really into that stuff too. So I will, sometimes go just to see that stuff specifically. So there is that. Also, I was talking about dry firing and not all the dealers have the cables that are ran through the slides, through the trigger guards and all this kind of stuff. A lot of them do just have them through the trigger guard and obviously that's to keep that from happening. So it is really cool. If you wanna get an idea of you know how big a, a, a this 1911 is or the features on this 1911 versus this one or you wanna get an idea of how big is the Shield Plus versus the full size, then you know you have that opportunity to see a lot of different things that maybe your local gun shop doesn't have. Also, new guns. You most likely are gonna see a lot of new guns there. So if there's something you've been wanting to get your eye on and possibly get your hands on, then that's a good way to do it. Again, it's always just courteous when you're touching somebody else's property, even though it's there for you to look, see, and hopefully potentially buy, ask them. Hey man, can I can I hold that? And they will be much more willing to allow you to, to, to kind of freely do what you want to with it as long as you're respecting their property. Another thing gun shows are good for is if, especially if you're just now getting into it or you've been into it for a long time. So this, this applies to everybody, is if you wanna get around a lot of like-minded people, again, my, my goal is not to bring anybody down that is at a gun show, that, that regularly visits a gun show, that sells stuff at gun shows. I would like to see the experience kind of brought back. Even when I started in 2014, it just seemed, it seemed super restrictive and, and kind of um, uh, sleazy on some parts of it. Not very good deals, but I didn't know any better then. You know, I, I, I enjoyed the experience. I got to talk with people and although I've learned way more, way more at my local gun shop than I ever did a gun show, you can still get that kind of experience. And like I said, 99% of those people that are there are probably gonna be really cool. It's that one or two that just maybe will ruin the experience a little bit. But if you wanna get around like-minded people, this is a great place to be. And really it can just be a fun Saturday thing to do with your family. You know, a lot of times they're held on weekends. Most of the time they're held on weekends. And depending on the size of the show, it can be a lot of fun, man. But I just typically don't go to them anymore because I get so much more of the experience out of my local gun shops. And honestly, as far as the World War II stuff, I've met some people that are into that, that frequent the same gun shop I do. So I get to have those conversations and sometimes see the cool things they bring in as well. So there's that, man. Big thanks to you guys for joining me. I'd love to hear what your experience is like with gun shows. What's your opinion on this? Whatever side you fall on here, 
Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. If you want to support what I do, you can do that on Patreon for as little as a dollar. When you go up through the tiers, man, I have a lot of cool stuff for y'all and incentives to get you to join. And uh, hopefully we can get more of y'all to join here in the coming year. Big thanks again. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.